it's Alex, your self-proclaimed queen of the ring, here to deliver your SmackDown review. And we're just going to open up by just opening up the show because that's the way that they did it. There was no entrances, which was interesting because it was pretty familiar from what I saw Wednesday just saying, but we opened up the show with Ms. TV and Team Hogan and Team Flair and the members of both those teams that are from SmackDown, which is Team Hogan, we've got Roman Reigns, Shorty G, and Ali. And for Team Flair, we have King Corbin, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Sami Zayn. And I thought this segment was a bit cringe. It was more so with Sami Zayn because he can't perform at Crown Jewel and he's in this segment doing this whole thing for Crown Jewel and for me he was the most entertaining thing about that segment but it was just weird towards the end when Team Flair was trying to walk away and then they were trying to set up the main event for that night which was going to be a six-man tag between all those wrestlers but then sammy couldn't wrestle they were in kansas city so it just didn't make any sense to me that they wouldn't just put him to wrestle because they had cesaro come out to wrestle that match for sammy because sammy said that he injured his neck on the plane and it just it didn't make any sense to me i just felt like sammy could have wrestled in kansas city with that and they just didn't it was i don't know it was just a mess it was a mess for me so i ah, hate to see it next we have the new day versus dolph ziggler and robert rude and unfortunately xavier woods wasn't there because he was injured during the australian tour that they had this following week that was very sad to see, but it was actually pretty cool to see when they were backstage, when the New Day was backstage and they had armbands that said XW for Xavier Woods and they had a tablet with Xavier Woods, I guess, in bed recovering and they were, he was still, you know, hyping him up, which was <laughs> pretty funny. But yeah, it was a short match. I didn't understand what was going on in that match because we had the entrances, we started the match, we cut to commercial break, we came back from commercial break, and then we continued the match, but then Dolph Ziggler won, and we saw the B team and Lucha House Party were watching the match backstage, but afterwards when Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode won, the Revival came out, attacked New Day, and then Heavy Machinery came out and helped the New Day, and it was just, again, another setup for Crown Jewel, don't really care about it, but it was just so short, and it was just all conjobulated. That's not a real word, but it's a word for me. <laughs> so yeah, it was just kind of everywhere. And then apparently next week, the Revival are putting up their tag team titles on the line against New Day, and it's kind of predictable that the New Day is probably going to win, and they're probably going to win at Crown Jewel. Next, we finally have a women's match this week, which is good to see. It was Lacey Evans versus some jobber from Kansas City, but it was good to see a women's match because we didn't get one at Monday Night Raw, and that was just not good. But Lacey Evans surprised me. She actually impressed me during this segment. I hate to admit it. I really, really do. But she came out before they started the match. You know, she did her whole little thing on the mic about her being nasties and Kansas City being nasties and how she was just going to walk out of the ring. And it wasn't, wasn't worth her time, you know. And so then the ref started the match, she got out of the ring, she's starting to walk back towards the ramp, and then the ref is counting her out, and then the ref is about to get to nine, and then she gets into the ring, punches that jobber out, one, two, three, Lacey Evans wins, and she won me over. I hate to admit that, but she did. She did, good job, Lacey Evans. Moving along to the segment that Everyone was excited to see the Firefly Funhouse, and we opened up with a funeral for Rambling Rabbit for what Seth Rollins did to him, and at one point Bray Wyatt 
makes it an open casket funeral and we see this zombified rabbit and Bray Wyatt takes him and kisses him and Rambling Rabbit is alive. Apparently Bray Wyatt has some healing powers with his kisses, but then Mercy eats Rambling Rabbit. It was short, but it was a fun segment. It was probably one of the best segments of the night. Next we have Drew Gulak. I'm happy that I can say that name right this week instead of last week, I apologize for that. But we have Drew Gulak versus Kalisto and Drew Gulak picks up his PowerPoint presentation from last week that he was showing Braun Strowman and you know, he's helping promote this match against Tyson Fury and Braun Strowman at Crown Jewel. And then Braun Strowman comes out, distracts Gulak, Kalisto gets the win. Braun Strowman attacks Gulak, and then we should get excited for this crown jewel match. Moving along, we have a in-ring interview segment with Michael Cole and Daniel Bryan, and Michael Cole asks Daniel Bryan if he believes that the Yes Movement is coming back, hopefully, maybe, but then Shinsuke and Sami Zayn, who has three segments tonight, congratulations to them, because they barely get any screen time, but they come out, and they try to persuade Daniel Bryan and joining them. They're alike. Sami Zayn is a vegan. Daniel Bryan is a vegan. It makes sense. And Daniel Bryan walks away. And it seems like maybe the Yes Movement is coming back, hopefully. Next, we have another women's match. We'd love to see it. Nikki Cross versus Mandy Rose. And Sasha Banks and Bayley are actually on commentary. And although the match was good, Nikki Cross won with a neck breaker. Sasha Banks and Bailey on commentary was interesting because Sasha Banks is playing up this, you know, hype woman for Bailey, and Bailey just seems like she's defending her actions, of course, and she still thinks that she's a role model, and she says that this division just needs to step it up. And it's interesting for me because the women's division on both Raw and SmackDown always felt like it was four horsewomen and everyone else. And although they don't give people the chance to face these women to have amazing matches, like Naomi, Ember Moon, Mickey James when she wasn't injured, it makes sense to me that Bailey would say that nobody's stepping it up because sometimes it does feel like the rest of the women on the division don't step it up. So I actually like what she's playing around with. I like Bailey's character right now. It's a little fresh for her. I like it. It's really good. Good job, Bailey. Moving on to the Kane Velasquez, Rey Mysterio, Brock Lesnar, and Paul Heyman segment. Rey Mysterio and Kane Velasquez come out to the ring, they cut a promo, and Rey Mysterio actually says that he's proud of Dominic for taking the beating that Brock Lesnar gave to Dominic a while back. Paul Heyman says that Brock Lesnar just doesn't have time for them, and that's because Brock Lesnar actually attacked Dominic backstage and Rey Mysterio and Cain Velasquez runs backstage. They cut to commercial break. They come back from commercial break. Dominic is getting treated by a doctor on top of a table. Brock Lesnar comes into the room and attacks Cain Velasquez and Rey Mysterio with a trash can, then flings Rey Mysterio onto a wall and then Brock Lesnar then <laughs> F5's Cain Velasquez on top of Dominic. That was the best thing of the whole night. And finally, we have the six-man tag match between Team Hogan and Team Flair, which is Roman Reigns, Shorty G, and Ali for Team Hogan. And then we have Team Flair, which is King Corbin, Shinsuke Nakamura, Sami Zayn can't fight in this match apparently, even though they're in Kansas City. So we have Cesaro coming out, but then they emphasize that Cesaro isn't going to be in the match at Crown Jewel, which doesn't make any sense to me because Sami isn't going to be in the match at Crown Jewel either. Couldn't they have said that on commentary? Ali just completely shined in this match. He shines in any match that they give him, and I think he just deserves a title shot. He deserves so much more. And I was actually happy to see that he got the pin because I know, although, you know, Team Hogan won, and maybe who knows if Team Hogan or Team Flair is going to win at Crown Jewel, but 
we all know that probably if Team Hogan wins, Roman is definitely gonna get the pin. So it was actually nice to see Ali get the pin. Overall, if I had to give this whole episode of SmackDown a grade, it would be a D. Honestly, I hate to say it, but this just wasn't a good episode for me personally because I wasn't looking forward to Crown Jewel. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that this was a good episode? Are you looking forward to Crown Jewel? Are you going to watch Crown Jewel? I mean, for me personally, a pro was the Firefly Funhouse and Cain Velasquez getting F5'd on Dominic. But a con is just kind of the whole show, maybe? Side note, I will be in Buffalo next week for SmackDown, actually. So if you're in the building and you see me, make sure to say hi. And I'm also gonna be sitting hard cam side. I think second row. So if you see me at home, make sure to take pictures and tag me on Instagram at underscore queen of the ring or tag me on Twitter at a queen of the ring. I'm also gonna be vlogging at the show. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel already. It's Queen of the Ring Wrestling. I'm sure the link will be down below or maybe up top. Anywhere? I'm not too sure, but either way, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Alex, your self-proclaimed Queen of the Ring, and I will see you guys next week. Maybe literally next week in the building. <laughs> Bye.